hello there in today's video i'll be giving my honest review of some products and supplies that ohuhu kindly gifted me starting out with the watercolor paint this is a set of 24 paints with each tube being 12 milliliters right off the bat i'm noticing there's a nice range of values in this set and all of the tubes are pretty large there's also a set of six watercolor brushes that are included Next up is a set of 60 dual-sided brush pens with one end being a brush tip while the other is a fine liner. The canister holds all 60 pens, six replacement nibs for both ends, a printed swatch card, and a DIY swatch card. I am loving how these look all bundled up in the canister, and then kind of similar to the paints, I am already loving the variety of colors offered. This is an 8.5 by 6 inch, 120 pound, 62 page mixed media sketchbook. And inside the package, you receive this instructional booklet explaining how to use this plastic sheet in between each page, as well as how to tear out pages nice and neatly. Now, before I get into the watercolor swatches, I have to first open up each tube of paint. They all come with this little aluminum casing over the top and you use the other end of the cap that has a pointed tip inside. Just push it down and then you have all your paints open and ready to go. I've got my plastic sheet under the page and my swatches all measured out and I am ready to paint. Now I am using the Artsmith brushes as well as the Ahuhu brushes just to see how they compare because I already love the Artsmith brand and I use it with watercolor paints. So we will just be doing a little test along with the swatches and the final illustration just to compare the two types of brushes. Now right off the bat, I'm noticing that a lot of these colors are relatively vibrant and saturated. Um, I know with watercolor, when you put the paint down, um, initially it looks a lot brighter than it does um, once it dries. Um, it can look a bit quite dull when it dries, but with these colors, I actually think that for the most part, they didn't dull too much. I think the swatch that initially goes down onto the paper is for the most part, the swatch that you are going to see once it dries. This is why I love making swatches because I'm not only testing out how a swatch of color looks, I'm also comparing the two brushes and I'm seeing how well the sketchbook works with the paint. Now switching to the Ohuhu brush for a few swatches, I am happy to say that I really didn't notice much of a difference between Ohuhu and Artsmith. I will say, however, that the other brushes that come in the Ohuhu set I am not sure how much I would really use them with watercolor paints simply because I personally like to use a brush that comes to a nice point the way that the brushes I've been using do. So I think I'll just use the other brushes to primarily just paint with gouache. After labeling all of my swatches, I'm ready to show them off to you. I am so happy with how they turned out. Um, there were a couple colors that weren't um, quite as smooth and creamy as the other ones and that is rose. As I even rub my finger across it, it, it's even a different consistency compared to the other colors. And flesh tint as well was kind of the same way. It was almost like a drier paint. But besides those two colors, all the others looked really nice. They lay down beautifully. I get a nice little wash of color in each and every swatch. And I'm so happy with how they all turned out. Now moving on to the final illustration. For this, I once again am going to be using the Ohuhu brushes and the Artsmith brushes to put them to the test. And I'm also using my watercolor paint palette that I just added a bunch of cute stickers to. Now here's where things took a slight turn. I initially wanted to paint all these Amazon rainforest animals into my sketchbook, giving each of them their own page. But I tried using the Ohuhu sketchbook to paint them and it just wasn't uh, really working out. I tried to let colors dry in between layers and I was just kind of struggling with the page warping and the colors just not laying down the way that I wanted them to. I'm not sure if I was using too much paint or too much water or what, but since I do want this to be a finished artwork, I am going to move over to a different sheet of paper and try using that rather than the sketchbook. But I will come back to the sketchbook, I promise. I decided to switch over to a sheet of Canson watercolor paper and I'm just going to go ahead and sketch all of my cats onto the paper using a Prismacolor pencil. And here they are before they get painted in all their adorable glory. Once the sketch is complete, I'm ready to erase some of those darker lines. But before I do that, I'm going back into my sketchbook, looking at this orange and vermilion color and deciding that those are kind of the direction I want my cats to go in. 
I'm just using my sketchbook once again really quick to kind of play around with some of the colors of the brush pen markers and see if an orange and red orange cat is the look I wanted to go for. I'm really happy with how that page is turning out so I'm going to go back over to the final illustration page with the color vermilion I'm going to go ahead and start painting these cats. With each of my cats I went ahead and just did a light layer of paint across the whole thing just to kind of get uh, the base covered and not really have much white showing except for the stripes. After the first layer I was able to go ahead wait for that to dry and then go in with a second layer of vermilion just to get a nice little wash of color once again over the whole thing um, kind of leaving some areas a bit with a bit less paint and some with a little bit more just to kind of give a good bit of texture to the whole piece. Now that I'm using these paints a bit more, I do think that they would be really good for someone who is just kind of starting out with watercolor paint. Even while I'm painting these cats, I am trying to change up my technique a bit. With this one in particular, I am going to put a wash of water down first and then add color over the top. And initially that layer came out less saturated than I intended, which I was able to fix later. But overall, it was a nice way to just experiment with my technique. Once all the layers on all of my cats were dry, I went ahead in with some of that orange that I mentioned earlier, along with some yellow, just to add a bit more dimension and just make them a bit more visually interesting. For the amount of paint that you get in each tube, I think that the price point is great for someone who just kind of wants to really experiment with them. I think watercolor has quite a few different techniques that you can use to paint with it and I think it would be really nice for somebody to kind of experiment and learn how to use paints using these. I'm noticing that these paints are able to layer on top of each other very nicely and when I'm using them as wet on wet paints um, they are able to blend very beautifully together as well. I'm very pleased with the amount of texture and dimension I'm able to achieve with just using the paints as that's the look that I'm going for with this illustration. Now before I go in with any of the colored pencil details I just wanted to show you what the cats are looking like when they are solely painted with watercolor and this is exactly the look that I am going for with the amount of dimension, texture, and the vibrancy of the colors. Now I like to use watercolor as kind of a base for the whole illustration, that's just how I like to use it, and then go in with colored pencils on top. Regardless of the watercolor paint that I'm using, I always like to go in with colored pencil details on top. I typically like to use watercolor more as a base for my illustrations and then I'll go in with colored pencil details just to refine the illustration a bit more. The Prismacolor pencils really kind of just melted right into the base layer of watercolor paint and I was very happy with how kind of seamlessly they just kind of blended in with the whole base of the illustration. Once my illustration is done, I'm just going to go ahead and scan it in at a nice high resolution. Once they're all scanned in, I'll be using Photoshop along with my Intuos Pro to just kind of smooth out a lot of the edges on the cats and play around with how they are arranged for the final illustration. Without further ado, here is the finished illustration of Margo the cat and all the activities that she gets up to in her day-to-day -day life. Now moving on to the next product, the dual brush pens. I feel like the best way to make these swatches when I have 60 colors is to lay out all of them in numerical order and then make the swatches from there. The dual brush pens do come with one side being a pointed brush tip while the other is a fine liner and for my swatches I will be using the brush tip to make them. Similar to the paint, I'm noticing that a lot of these colors are quite vibrant and they are just laying down very nicely on the paper. Something I really love about these is that I'm able to draw this rectangle in the box and then right away go in and fill the rest of the box in without having any kind of overlap. So I think as long as you're working relatively quickly, you are able to prevent a lot of that overlap from happening that you can sometimes get with brush pens. While having all of the swatches in one place is very useful, I decided to make even more swatches myself just because the printed card that Ohuhu gives you isn't quite accurate to the colors that you swatch yourself. When I have this many colors, I really find that making mini swatches like this very beneficial because you can see how different colors look together. You can also see how similar some colors may be and you can pick out color palettes that you wouldn't otherwise see if all the swatches were on one page. 
Without making these, I wouldn't have been able to see that these purples are my absolute favorites in this whole set. Now for the dual brush pens, I decided to just play around with them in the sketchbook rather than making full illustrations. I think the sketchbook really held up well as far as using as much of these brush pens as I wanted to and I was able to layer them nicely and there wasn't any kind of warping that I experienced with the watercolor paint. So using the markers on them I would say is definitely a safe bet. Now when I'm using a spiral bound sketchbook, if I really like something that I'm making on one page, I have no problem just tearing it out and using it as a reference for the next page in the sketchbook. So that's exactly what I did. I'm really putting this sketchbook to the test because I really want to see if it can hold up uh, with everything that I typically use a sketchbook for. After I tear out a page to use as reference, I like to be able to pop it right back into the spiral binding and I'm happy to say that Ohuhu passed this test as far as being able to put the page back in and still be able to turn it with ease. Going back to the brush pens, I just want to say that I appreciate this canister that they come in. I think it is so, so easy to find colors and kind of figure out what you are looking for because they're all just kind of right there ready for you to pick. I also appreciate how easy it is for me to add color to my sketchbook when I'm using these brush pens. I am someone who typically uses a lot of graphite when I'm sketching. Usually when I add color to my sketchbook, I'll use colored pencils or paint like watercolor or gouache, which can all be kind of time consuming mediums. But these brush pens make using various colors so easy because of the accurately colored caps on all the brush pens and the design of the canister that they are stored in. I think both these features really make it easy to know what color you can expect when you pull it out. I'm finding that both the brush tip and the fine liner tip have really come in handy as I've been making all these sketchbook pages. Um, I decided to actually go ahead and design some new greeting cards with these brush pens and I'm very happy with how they all turned out. I was really able to kind of just experiment and kind of figure out what I wanted each page to look like. I have every intention of continuing to use this sketchbook primarily to design greeting cards because I had so much fun just making all these different pages. I also made sure to write down the numbers of the colors that I was using just to make it easier for myself to kind of go back and see what colors I used on that page in particular. Now hopping over to my iPad, I'm going to finalize the greeting card designs in Procreate so they can go up onto my Etsy shop where I sell them as digital downloads. Now from those initial sketches in my sketchbook, I was able to make these four greeting cards that I absolutely love so much and I'm so happy with how they all turned out. Now as far as the sketchbook goes, I really like it for sketching, for using uh, some slightly drier media. I think the brush pens do a great job in it, colored pencils would look nice, um, so really any slightly drier media. I think a light wash of watercolor would look nice, but I think if you're going to be making more finalized art, especially with watercolor paint, I'd recommend using a different paper. But for making swatches and just kind of playing around in a sketchbook, I think it is great for that purpose. Now for the brush pens, I absolutely love these. I really think that the canister that the brush pens are stored in is a really good design. And I love that there is such a wide variety of colors to choose from in this set of 60. I love that you can layer the same color over top of itself as long as you are working relatively quickly. Really my only issue is that the brush tip cap can fit nicely over top of the fine liner side, but the same cannot be said for the fine liner inside of the brush tip side. So it just kind of falls out, it doesn't really stay put, but for me that's not a huge problem just because I kind of put my cap off to the side most of the time anyway. Overall, I love these brush pens, and if you do decide to get them, I highly recommend making your own little swatch cards like I have here. Last but certainly not least, we have the watercolor paints and the brushes that all came in a set. With each tube of paint being 12 milliliters, I think that is more than enough paint for someone who is just starting out and wanting to experiment with the medium. Most of the colors are quite vibrant, and while painting with it, I found that blending colors together was pretty easy. As for the brushes, I personally would only use one of them for watercolor paints, but I am not opposed to using the other brushes with another medium like gouache. So all in all, I would recommend this set to beginners. 
If you are wanting to purchase any of the products in this video or any of the other products Ohuhu has to offer, you can use my code BONJORDAN for 10% off your order. I will have the website and products mentioned here linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!